So this is basically a short intro into database theory and what SQL is, so server query language. Uh, it's pronounced SQL, so if you're in a job interview, use SQL and you'll probably get the job more often than if you pronounce it SQL. And what it really is is just talking about the tables that you would normally see in something like Excel and how do you combine them together to answer the data questions that you have. And that comes in handy in a lot of different uh, careers, some that you wouldn't expect, even a brand manager at marketing uh, in Amazon, for example, or even Starbucks, you may use this uh, tool to be able to pull the data you want in. So it's not always going to be in a perfect Tableau dashboard for you. That may be up to you and self-serve depending on how the organization works and it comes in handy. And even if it doesn't directly, you'll be able to know what to ask for or why the data is including certain things uh, that you may not want or that that's missing and things like that. So uh, really briefly, let's talk about what tables are and how they link together. So I'm sure we've all been interacting with different things with the columns and fields and the rows of data in between it. So the common e-commerce uh, case for this is to have a table of customer records. So your customer profile, uh, internally, you may not see it. You might have a customer ID. It might go through some systems that show you that, but usually not. And then it'll have all your other components of your address and phone number and email and things like that. So here are our customers for this e-commerce comp company. All very real, obviously. Uh, so orders here would be the orders those customers are making. So as you'll notice, this list is just a list of six orders. And I can see the customer IDs there. So I'm kind of foreshadowing what might uh, come next, but we have the order date and the amount and the ID. And obviously, as you've seen many of your order confirmations, you'll probably have a list of products. So your inventory SKUs, and there may be even option SKUs for colors and things like that, and a lot of other information uh, as well, and things like shipping choices and stuff like that. But this is super simple. Uh, what we wanna get to is there's this concept of the order ID and the customer ID, and then customer ID links here. So that's basically where it starts to get interesting is this uh, diagram here. So if you're uh, in computer science or uh, information systems, you may have seen things like this. This is just a chart that has those two tables and they are linked together and the PK is primary key. So that customer table, the primary key is your customer ID and that links to the foreign key and the orders table, which is the customer ID. So they have that same matching logic. So customer number three in the customer's table is Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift has an order in the orders table, actually two, I believe. And so for that orders table, you probably don't need to know this for this course, but just trying to describe how the different keys work. That order ID in the orders table is a primary key that could connect to something else. So there might be another uh, table where it's a shipping pick list from the warehouse to ship out Taylor Swift, whatever she ordered from our e-commerce uh, company. So that would actually link together from that order ID uh, to another table. But for this very simple example, customer ID links to customer ID. And just a little hint that IDs are very easy to link together. Uh, you could link by names and other things or uh, email address, but customer ID is probably a good safe thing to link to. So that is database theory in a nutshell and then hopping over to SQL. So this is a Venn diagram of the different types of joins. There's left joins, right joins, uh, inner joins, and outer joins. And it sounds like a little uh, complex, but I actually recommend printing this out if you ever have an interview that you've heard in some of the reviews online, if they sometimes ask this question, uh, I would have this at hand. Because even I don't really want to I answer the question without having a visual representation so I'm, I know I'm making the right call. Uh, and this is all this is saying is from that list of customers, which we'll use for A in this example, and then there's that list of orders, which is B, what do you want to return in your data? Do you want a list of all of the customers and then the data about what orders they have? And so you have every single customer, uh, even the ones that didn't make orders, and then the orders? Or do you want every single customer that's in that list and just the orders of the customers in that list? So when we were looking at that second table, 
Uh, so we have the, the customers here, one through five. So we only have five customers, but this order list, uh, there are some customer numbers like number 10 and nine. Now, I don't have those. So the analysis I'm doing today uh, only covers these customers. So one, and th one, two, and three are there, nine and 10 are not related. So when I would look at this, I would want all of the customers and all of the orders that match those customers. So I would use that inner join in the middle there. So it just depends on the answer you're trying to find with the data, what type of join you would choose. And then just to think through it logically, look at this diagram and then figure out of the list, what do you want? And it's okay if you're experimenting and you're in exploratory mode and you're pulling it up in the data and you're just getting a, a rose with uh, extra blanks and you're like, why is that happening? And you're like, oh, okay, I just need to switch the join to something different and then I'll get uh, the set of data that I want to analyze. So that's about it.